In the previous examples of computing confidence interval estimates, the sample data used the ratio scale of measurement. What if we want to consider the following situations where the data use the nominal scale of measurement, such as in the cases below? One, the career services director at Southern Technical Institute reports that 80% of its graduates enter the job market in a position re re related to their field of study. Two, a company representative claims that 45% of Burger King sales are made at the drive through window. Three, a survey of homes in the Chicago area indicated that 85% of the new construction had central air conditioning. And four, a recent survey of married men between the ages of 35 and 50 found that 63% felt that both partners should earn a living. Recall the binomial conditions we discussed in Chapter 6, where the sample data is the result of counts. For each trial, there are only two possible outcomes, success or failure, and the probability of success remains the same from one trial to the next. As we learned in that chapter, by virtue of the central limit theorem, when the sample size is large, we can use the normal distribution to approximate the binomial distribution. We say that a sample size is large enough when n times pi and n times 1 minus pi are both at least 5. The formula shown on this slide for computing the confidence interval for a population proportion uses the z distribution. In this formula, p represents the sample proportion, z is a z-score for a specified confidence level, and n is the sample size. We'll see how these formulas are used in examples in the following slides. Here is an example showing how to compute a confidence interval estimate for a population proportion. The union representing the BBA wants to know if there is enough support among its members for the union to merge with the Teamsters Union. According to its bylaws, at least three quarters of the union membership must approve any merger. To find if there is enough support, it surveyed 2,000 current BBA members. The survey reveals that 1,600 favor the merger proposal. Based on these sample results, we develop a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of BBA members supporting the proposal. We also want to know, based on the results, if we can conclude that the necessary proportion of BBA members favor the merger. We develop the 95% confidence interval for the proportion on the next several slides. In applying the formula for computing the 95% confidence interval estimate for the true proportion of BBA members who are in favor of a merger, we will need to obtain the sample proportion P and the Z value for the 95% confidence level. The sample proportion P is obtained by dividing X the number of BBA members in the sample who indicated they are, are in favor of the merger by the sample size n. The sample proportion p is 0 0.80 obtained by 1600 divided by 2000. Next, we need to obtain the z value for a 95% confidence level. We will use the standard normal distribution table to do this as illustrated in an earlier problem and again demonstrated in the next slide. One way to obtain the z value for computing a 95% confidence interval for the population proportion is by using the standard normal table in appendix B1 and as shown on this slide. On the distribution curve shown on the slide, observe that the lower and upper limits of a 95% confidence interval are equidistance from the mean or center of the distribution. So as such, the area from the center of the distribution where z is equal to zero and the z value corresponding to the upper or lower confidence limit is 0.475. This number is half of 0 0.95. Locating, the in, locating inside the table the number equal to or closest to 0 0.4750, we find the corresponding z value of plus or minus 1.9. 96. So finally in step 3 we substitute the sample proportion P of 0.80 and the Z value of 1.96 into the equation. 
we obtain a lower limit of 0.782 and an upper limit of 0.818. We can then therefore say that we are 95% confident that the range 0.782 and 0.818 contains the true proportion of BBA members who are in favor of the merger. Since the bylaws requires three quarters or 75% of the union membership to approve any merger based on the computed interval, we can conclude that the merger proposal plan is likely to pass because the lower limit of interval is greater than 0.75 or 75% and the range includes values greater than 75% of the union membership.